Hey everyone, Gig Coach Jake, and I'm back with more information on the Grubhub pay model changes. Now, this is a follow up to the video I did last week. Remember, I said that I didn't want to jump to conclusions, I wanted to wait to see what happened. Now, there's been two days where some of these markets, Denver and the other ones, have had a chance to gather some data and get a look and see what's really going on. On top of that, we had some changes in my market and some other ones as well here in Phoenix this last weekend. Those were big changes. I have some really good data and things to share with you guys and ladies. They're going to blow your minds. So I also have some other screenshots of another model that they're running. It's going to screw with people's heads at first, but it's pretty simple to get around. Now, with all of these, I haven't really seen a lot of negative things with it. The one negative thing I've seen is the lack of transparency in one pay model. Now, the one that was in my market was beautiful. I really hope that that one continues in the following weekends and on down the road. But that was very profitable. It was a great thing for Grubhub, the drivers, and the customers. So anytime you have a situation that's a win-win all the way around for everyone, probably one that you want to imp implement on a regular basis, especially when you're trying to gain back ground from DoorDash that took the lead. Anyhow, enough talking about all that. Let's get into the actual data and see what I collected myself on the pay model here and the other ones in the other markets. So that way all of you can see what's going on, what they're actually testing, and be prepared for what might happen in your market. So let's take a look. You can see right here how profitable my Saturday was. I wish I had the other days where I could put in more time, but 12 hours you see they're scheduled. 13% acceptance trading. Normally I'm between three to 5% acceptance. 18 orders delivered, $270 total I made. You can see right here that the start times, I didn't even start when my block did. I was finishing up at the gym, had to get some breakfast and take a shower, but all these offers were pretty far away. They made no sense whatsoever. So the ones that did make sense, you can see right here, the first one I accepted, 11, 10 a.m., the delivery pay, 724 alone. There was a tip, so it had nothing to do with the tip or not. This was Taco Bell, but it had nothing to do with Taco Bell. It was all orders in my market and some of the other markets as well. So scrolling down, let's take a look at some of these other ones. Here's a Taco Bell that there was a tip. Very nice tip on this one. It was pretty nice. And our normal base pay of 325 and the mileage, the 50 cents per mile, right? As a crow flies. So straight line mileage, it's not the actual true miles that we're going to be driving, unfortunately. So... Let's scroll on down here. I wish some of these other orders were closer. They would have made more sense. I would have had 25 to 30 deliveries done. It would make more money. So I don't understand this dispatch system sometimes, but I had a great day, so I'm not complaining at all. Now you can see right here, the bigger tips, again, 325 base plus the mileage, nothing different right there. So no incentive on these for them to throw a section of money when there's plenty being made. So... No reason to bump that 325 delivery pay. And I'll show you in a little bit what I found as far as the pattern that they were doing. So let's scroll down to see some of these other offers, see what else we found as I went through the day. Now, again, good tip, 325 base on this one at Yogi's. The mileage, nothing different there. So no surprises, nothing gained. There's another Taco Bell. Now look at this one, $1.50 tip. And then nine dollar delivery pay, so I made ten dollars and fifty cents on delivery pay, including the tip, and then the mileage. That's crazy. I mean, nine dollar base pay. That that's that's beautiful, right? Scrolling down here now, pork and a fork. They had some type of promo or something going. That's why I ended up with several of these in a row, with very nice tips. Again, base pay of the three twenty five. There was no adjustment there. They didn't do anything different. The one twenty nine mileage. And you see the other one, 128 for the mileage and nothing normal. So what it looks like they're doing from what I see is the ones that are lower tip that don't hit a certain base, they're going to add to. And you'll see in just a minute. So let's scroll on down. The pork and a fork, another one there. Good tip. No reason for them to add to. So pretty consistent there, right? I mean, no brainer. But now we're going to start to see some ones where there was a lower tip and they had to add to. So as we scroll down see some of these other offers in here look at that 
$12 delivery pay on a zero tip offer. Man, wouldn't we love those of you that have been chasing zero tip offers for a long time? I bet you sure wish you've been paying it 12 bucks per delivery. Of course, this is not sustainable, but there's some middle ground where they can find a sustainable amount. Now, if you look on the next one, the Sabai, 325 mileage, the big tip, nothing different there. Now, here's a stack Taco Bell, one with a tip, one with no tip, and you can see the difference. Now, the 391 and the 484 adds up to 875, which I found to be the minimum delivery pay that they were going to pay plus mileage. So, and it was more. Sometimes there's no rhyme or reason. What I did find, like you saw, the lower the tip, the higher the delivery pay went. That's just, again, sharing the data I found so far. And another Sabai, good tip. Thai places, I mean, Asian places are good. So it's good to recognize some of these patterns in case they do pull out the rug from underneath us and make cherry picking a lot harder. So as we scroll down, see some more of the offers for that day. Again, another big one. No addition to the delivery pay of the 325. But you see that I did a lot more Taco Bell offers and offers that I normally wouldn't do because the delivery pay was sufficient. Instead of getting these three to seven dollar offers, now, I mean, another no tip. This one they actually tipped me three dollars in cash when I got there. So I ended up making fifteen nineteen on this one on a simple Taco Bell offer, right? So we want to do these offers. They're very efficient, especially the Taco Bell. Now we get there, they get them prepared pretty fast. As long as it's close, it makes sense for all of us. We just need to be paid enough for it to be profitable. Now, the last one of the evening right here, yes, big fat tip. I had to drive all the way down to downtown Phoenix and then deliver to a high rise hotel building. So it was towards the end of the night. You see, I'm almost 10 o'clock. I had to pull myself off the couch to get this one, but good money. Now, someone on my market told me that they have a little birdie inside that they gave information that said they're going to be running this promo in the future weekends to get more of those offers delivered. So, it's a great time for them to collect data that shows drivers like myself taking deliveries we normally wouldn't and a lot less wait time for those deliveries to the customer. So, this could be a great thing. But, that's just a little birdie. We'll see if there's some truth to it come next weekend. Here's some deliveries from Sunday. You see right there, good tips on them. The delivery pay the base was normal. The 325 plus a mileage plus a tip. So not always are they going to have to shell out that extra money. Only the ones where there's not enough tip. So let's scroll down to see what else we had on that day when they were still running that promo. So a lot of rejects. So many that were so far away that just made no sense whatsoever. There it is. $10 delivery pay on a $1 tip. So beautiful. I mean, you can see how long it took me to get done. I mean, that one actually was about half an hour before I got the next offer. So that paid for my time. Now, the one before it had a big enough tip where there wasn't any additional added. They didn't need to. Again, a lot of my offers, you've already seen about half or more didn't need to subsidize on the delivery pay to get everything done, but these allowed me to be more efficient when they did plug one in every so often to where I would accept. And again, a win-win for everybody, right? So scrolling down, let's see what else we had. Another Taco Bell. Again, not all Taco Bell offers are bad. I mean, you already saw several there I had that the tip was so much they didn't have to add any additional pay. And it was actually some of the other offers like Panda Express and places like that where I had one item. There's a Subway where they had kick in extra money. And there it is again. Yes, that pizza place. Big fat tip. This was six pizzas and another great end to a, a day. Here's data I have from a subscriber that actually is in the Denver market. So he was kind enough to collect data yesterday while he's driving. So that way I can show it on here and compare it with everything else and not just guess or conjecture and opinions and blah, blah, blah. So you see Taco Bell right there, so there's no wait time, 1.7 miles, 513 tip, 396 delivery pay. No mileage, right? So they're combining it. The next one, no wait, 1.2 miles, 555, 396 delivery pay. Combining all together. 
Then you got the Buffalo Wild Wings, estimated 16-minute wait, which is what they're basing their, their time off of. Actual wait, 26 minutes. We know there's a lot of places like BWW where we wait a lot longer than the estimated time. Then you have the estimated wait time in the next one, 12 minutes. Actual wait time, 16 minutes. 1.9 miles, 11.53 tip, 5.10 delivery pay. So going on to the next one, B-dubs again. What do you know? 10 minutes extra wait, 4.1 miles, 9.52 tip, and 5.24 delivery pay. So again, combining the mileage as a crow flies, so that straight line mileage, with the actual uh, time. So any time that they guess that it might be, so that they estimate. So the next one, estimated wait time, 12 minutes. So what they're using to calculate in their algorithm. Actual wait, 16 minutes, 1.9 miles, or 1.9 miles, 11.53 tip, and 5.10 delivery pay. So, and then here's one where there's a, a stacked offer. So estimated wait time, zero minutes, actual wait time, 25 minutes. So nothing extra in the algorithm. You can see right there in the delivery pay, only 467 despite the long wait time. So what other apps do this, right? Pretty familiar. Anyhow, so what it looks like they're doing is they're wrapping it all up, right? So they're allowing us, they've heard your voices, right? As far as the wait times. This is a great way for them to address that, but not give up any money and actually start to pay less. So less transparency we're here, as you can see, with just the delivery pay. What they can do over time with this is squeeze it down little by little, and you'll never know, or there's nothing you can say. Perfect example is look at Uber. Yesterday in California, they just got another 25% pay cut, and they still got to sign on and keep driving. What are they going to do about it? Not too much different here, the way this is looking. Huge thanks to that viewer for sending me that data information. Very good stuff to share with everyone else. Now, what he did find is that the overall delivery pay, the base pay, was a little bit lower on average than what it was before, but on average, his overall earnings were slightly higher. Good thing for now, yes, but again, the one bad thing is the lack of transparency where they could start to squeeze things down little by little by little and fly under the radar. So, but we don't want to jump to conclusions, get too riled up just yet. We want to see how this plays out, and you never know. It might not even end up in your market. Here's a screenshot of another model that's floating around that they're potentially testing. You can see right here, totally messes with you, right? You're like 720 estimated earnings today. What does that even mean? And then 1651 earnings if accepted. Well, essentially what I believe this means, you take the 1651, subtract the 720, which is the earnings they've already made that day, and you have your offer, right? So what is that? $9.31. You can't do it real quick in your head. You can just use a calculator. You got plenty of time. Again, more psychological tactics to mess with us, especially the cherry pickers, right? So here's one that had several deliveries, right? So 85.20 estimated earnings. Again, what does that mean? Lack of transparency again there. And then earnings if accepted. 93.19 minus 85.20. What is that? 7.99. So for accuracy, again, just use a calculator. It's not that big a deal. Don't let them mess with you with these psychological tactics. So another model that, again, they're potentially testing in different models, markets, so we'll see what happens with it. This is the last one I've seen that's floating around there. And you can see the bottom right there is sent in January 30th. So this was a little bit older. This one was based like when they had further miles, they were actually going to make more on there. You can see the per order, the base pay is going up. Now, I haven't seen any data or anyone make any extra on this. What I did see is someone getting pissed off that they're not seeing this extra money like what was said in this email. So we'll wait and see what happens on this one also. Just like before, I don't want to jump to conclusions on things that I haven't collected enough data on. Now, this is a small sample that we can get kind of an idea of what may be going on. And again, the lack of transparency thing is the biggest deal. That's the one that's similar to DoorDash where they could start to change things over time. Because guess what happens when you turn on the app and you start to work? You've agreed to new terms no matter what they are. They can change things whenever they want. So that is the one thing that I do not, do not like with the changes that are going on. But everything else looks really good for drivers, customers, and Grubhub alike. I hope all this information is helping you all. If anything, the videos keep some of you entertained, those that already know what's going on. But... I have more videos on this coming soon, especially to touch on the Yum! brands and the whole Taco Bell thing. 
Have a great day, evening. Be safe out there on the roads. A lot of crazy weather and drivers. And as always, work hard, but work smarter.